fundamental problem of, human, of the human race was they allowed themselves to live at the mercy of God. Come on. Instead of, instead of uniting together and becoming independent of God. Uh, then I may have uh, further contemplated, what if uh, we took the ingenious of Noah and the paradise of Eden and combined them with the city of Cain? What if we rolled all what if we roll all of the best ideas into one and work together on a universal scale and make a paradise city built on, techno uh, on the, technological, the technological principles of Noah? It will stand any flood. It will elevate men to the paradise of heaven. It will bring us all together in mutual co uh, cooperation. We will, we will be so busy making ourselves gods that we won't have time to squabble and fight over altars and fields, and well and well and wells and silver. We will call our city the gate of God. Hear us out. Before we frown on them, come on, somebody. Be true. Come on, keep it 
Yeah. Many of you want to be an immigrant. They refuse to. They they said this this is where I'm staying. I'm planting right here. Amen. We're gonna build us a city and a tower, lest we be scattered. I don't want to be scattered. How many of you want to be scattered here today? Come on, let, we're gonna keep it real. We 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 can be kind of harsh and crude to the people in the text, amen. But we're just like these people in this text. Oh, help me, Lord Jesus, today. Amen. Hallelujah. They said, This is where I'm staying. This is where I'm going to stay. I want to build me an ark. Praise God. I, I, I'm asking God to help me. Somebody pray for me today. Listen, our society chose to live in outright rebellion against God. Yeah. Yeah. Period. Same-sex marriage. Yeah. And abortion. These abortion issues. The reality is, amen, these are moral issues. Right. Praise God. Amen. Now you, you know me. I think now well enough to know I am not a Republican and neither am I a Democrat. Okay. Amen. Praise the Lord. But the reality is you cannot legislate righteousness. I, I don't care how much you try to make it, amen, a rule or a regulation. Something has to get into the hearts of men and women that uh, uh, abortion is a moral issue. Come on. I want to save the life that God gives me. I wish I had some help. Amen. Amen. Same-sex marriage is a moral issue. Praise God. Amen. You got men, amen, and women that are confused, praise the Lord, because some of them choose to. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So you can't make nobody be holy. You've got to love the highway of holiness. Which I have help here today. Praise God. These people didn't want to be separated, nor did they put their trust in God. They are in total disobedience. And somehow they got to the place where it didn't matter. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. They, they, they completely ignored God and chose their own way. Amen. Uh, now, I, I, again, I do expect people to be adults. I do expect adults to think right, to act right, to do right. Amen. But as I said before, unregenerated flesh only knows how to operate according to its own flesh. Right. Right. Amen. And carnal saints know how to operate according. Well, hallelujah. Help us, Holy Ghost, here today. And so uh, 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 I expect them to do right. I, 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 I do, but but, but there are people that are going to constantly, amen, ignore the word of God. But shame, amen, it is on folk that have been raised, that have been reared, that have been taught in the kingdom of God, amen. And they outright despise the things of God. I think it would do us some good to pay attention to the reality that there is a right way and a wrong way to do things. Amen. Amen. There is God's way and man's way. Yes. Amen. Bishop says there, there are two kingdoms. Amen. Amen. God's. Amen. And the devil's. Amen. Praise God. Humility and pride. Amen. And these people chose a man-made religion over pure religion. Praise God. Oh, help me, Jesus. As I was thinking about it, you know, uh, there is this, this fuss, right, about religious people. You know, even among church folk, there is a fuss about, uh, I don't want to be too religious, right? Uh, uh, let me say this. We all know religion can't save you. Man, religion cannot save you. But in the same token, there is no real basis of spirituality without religion. Amen. We cannot be spiritual without following the practices, amen, and principles of the word of God daily. Amen. Amen. Paul, Paul got to talking about some folks that had power, but they were not spiritual. 
Amen. The Corinthian church had power. So they knew how to function, amen, uh, in the spirit and the gifts of the spirit. But they were not a spiritual people. Amen. What they did not do, they did not practice. Amen. And they did not obey the principles and the precepts of the word of God. Amen. I, I don't care how much you talk in tongues. I don't care how many devils or how many gifts you got at the same time. Amen. If you don't know how to obey the book, you're probably not a spiritual person. Real spirituality comes from being, amen, obedient to the principles and the practices of God's word. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When you get up and you go to work, you're doing what? You're going to work religiously. Praise God. Every morning I get up to pray, I'm praying religiously. Hallelujah. When I read the word every day, I'm doing that religiously. Why? Because I understand. Because I understand that there is value in doing this every single day because it helps me not only, amen, to overcome this world, but to be one with the Lord that I love. Come on, somebody. Amen. I, I, I always ask this question of folks. How, amen, can you end up in a place that you don't spend time with the creator of that place? Amen. Man, I want to spend time with God. I, I, and not just to tell God a, a whole bunch of things that I got going on. And I need to do that. But, amen, I, I, I really just enjoy. How many of you really just get up and enjoy being in the presence of God? Yes, amen. Amen. I mean, I don't have to ask for one thing, but I just want the Lord just to be where I am. Come on. If you like that, would you clap your hands or would you worship the Lord somehow? I, I just want to be in the presence of God. That's important to me. Hallelujah. Amen. So if all you can see is that walking with God is a bunch of do's and a bunch of don'ts, amen, then you're probably going to miss out on a beautiful relationship with God, His Word, and the people of God. Yeah. First John says this, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. Watch. And his commandments are not grievous. Amen. Thank God that his, God help me Lord, that the commandments of God really aren't burdensome. Right. That's what grievous mean. It's not a burden. Amen. I think it's Matthew 11, 28. Amen. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and, 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 and I'll give you rest. Come on. Amen. You, you, know, you know how to get rest from sin? Come to Jesus. Oh, help me here. Hold on. You know how to get rest from some things in your world? Just come to Jesus. Amen. If every day you're burdened, every day you're struggling, every day you're having a hard time, it's probably because you keep wearing the carrying the burden instead of giving it to Jesus and let Jesus take it. Come on, somebody help me. Hallelujah. I, I, I want to find rest. And finding rest is being obedient to the principles of the word of God. Somebody thank the Lord for the word of God. Amen. This is what separates apostolic believers from a religion without power and a made-up church and a man-made church who so-called made up an idea of spiritual without any kind of principles from the word of God. Amen. Come on. God is love. Hallelujah. But I love the word of God. Anybody love the word of God? Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Uh uh, thank God, amen, for the book and the standards of righteousness and holiness. And I do the best I can. I mean, if you do the best you can, amen, to maintain the standard of holiness. Right. Both inside and outside. That's right. You can put on, that, that, they say you can put a tuxedo on a pig and he's still a pig. <laughs> Okay, what that means is we can have a nice suit and have a bad attitude, amen. Yes, amen. Yes. Come on, I, I, I try to do the best I can on the inside and on the outside, right? Praise God. But I, here's what I realize, amen. 
Amen. As much as I'm trying to keep the standards of holiness, the reality is the standards of holiness are keeping me. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. That, that, that 40 mile an hour speed limit, amen, it's keeping you from a whole lot of danger out there. Come on, that red light, when it comes to tell you to stop, it's keeping you from a whole lot of danger out there. And the things in the Word of God, amen, they are not grievous. It is actually keeping you from a whole lot of foolishness out there that oftentimes you have no idea actually what you are getting into. Amen. Holiness. I love holiness. Amen. And it's not, I'm not just keeping holiness. Holiness is actually keeping me. Praise God. Come on, clap your hands. Amen. This ain't no fluffy, made-up set of rules. Amen. Fluffy. Hallelujah. Made-up rules of religion. Amen. To keep people in bondage. Amen. This is a law that helps keep us from bondage. Amen. Living for God is not hard. Proverbs 13 and 15. Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of the transgender, I mean transgressor, is hard. The word hard Greek in the Greek simply means continuously, enduring, perennial. The way of the transgressor is continual. It's hard. This is liberty. Amen. Amen. So we better know the difference, right, between Noah's church and Nimrod's congregation. Mm. I like that. Nimrod's tower is about saving your flesh. Well. Amen. This is why we cannot ignore the precepts of God's word. Amen. We must never ignore God or his word because there are towers being built everywhere. People trying to make a name for themselves. Yes. 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 Kanye West has started a church. Well. Come on. Amen. You right. Go ahead. And 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 I read about his ex-wife, Kim uh Kardashian. Kardashian or whatever her name is. And she said he did this just to heal himself. And and but he's got a swelling. Yes. He's he's got a swelling. And and, and and she said there's no actual place where they actually reside or meet together. They just kind of wherever he goes, it happens. Amen. And 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 and, and there's real no real gospel there. There's no it, it's just all music. And so he's just really Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Bishop. Amen. For not just allowing entertainment to sit us down and enter detain us. God help us. It's not just about music. You go, come on, when you come here, Bishop's going to give you some sound doctrine. Thank God. Come on, somebody. Thank God for sound doctrine. Amen. Amen. When you come here, God's going to help us. This is Nimrod's church. Amen. This is Nimrod's amen, establishment. Not, not this church. I'm talking about what I'm talking about. Kanye is establishing Nimrod's amen, tower of Babel. And you've got a whole bunch of people that are just settling. Praise God. And saying, I will follow that. What did Paul say? Thank God. Amen. For amen, a man of God that, 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 that can see. Amen. God, this, this church, amen, was actually before its time. It saw things way down the road, amen, before it actually got here. And Paul said it like this, there's coming a day, amen, where people will be seeking, amen, not sound doctrine, but they want something that will itch their ears, something that will tickle them, something that will make them feel good. Come on. And Kanye West said, I'm going to create something, amen, to make them feel good. But thank God for a man of God that says, no, amen, we got sound doctrine here. I might not make you feel good today, but if you'll get it in your spirit, you will appreciate the reality of good doctrine, of good teaching, of something that kept you from all the mess and all the packages that is in this whole world. Come on, somebody. Thank God for truth. Now, you go ahead and follow Kanye West and think he was sent by God. He wasn't sent by God. He was sent by his own flesh. Come on. Noah built an ark because God sent because God says, oh, yeah. is, this, is this all right this morning? 
hours in social media, and that's what they said. And that's just, this is his following a whole bunch of people that already supposedly have pastors. Pride will destroy a relationship with God, won't it? Pride goes before destruction. Amen. And the Bible emphatically warns us against pride. Amen. And I'm not talking about uh, uh, just inflate, faded pride in oneself or the appearance. Have you ever went to the bathroom and boy, this boy, boy. <laughs> Y'all ain't going to help me this morning. <laughs> Maybe spent too much time in the bathroom. In the mirror. Man, ain't nobody gonna tell the truth this morning. Amen. Just, just a little bit. Help me, Lord. I don't have a long time. Amen. When I get up and I go in there to shave, it takes me just a few moments. Yes, sir. Praise God. <laughs> and I'm out of there. Praise the Lord. Amen. But, but we have to be careful. I'm not just talking about, about that that kind of uh, uh pride. But how many of listen, I I I I was thinking about doing a pride test. Because we, we, we live in a generation of selfies, right? right. It's a selfie generation. <laughs> I don't even have my phone. It's back there. Yes, I have. They even take their lips, boy. <laughs> I don't even know how to do it. Praise God. Watch it. Amen. So if wanna, let's, let's do a test. Don't do it right now. Take your phone out. Go through all your pictures. And see how many pictures in your phone got you in it. Oh, hallelujah. If it does, I wonder how we line up with this. 2 Timothy 3 and 2. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous. Boasters. Proud. Blasphemy. Blasphemers. Disobedient to parents. Unthankful. Unholy. I did just a small word study on the Greek, on the Greek word here for love because I knew it didn't mean the kind of love that I really care for myself. Because if I care for myself correctly, I'll do the right things, correct? Amen. 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 I wouldn't destroy myself or intentionally hurt others due to the error or arrogance of my own way if I love myself. Right? The word in the Greek for love here is philotos, which simply means selfish. It's all about me and not God. That's Nimrod's. That's Nimrod. Please hear me. Pride is the prelude or the introduction to destruction. And our culture has gone so far, it can care less about the warning signs from Scripture. Mm. That's right. The concern is more about stroking their own egos. Babel was about people trying to make a name for themselves. Anybody ever checked out Jeff Bezos? Yeah. 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 He's the second richest man in the world. Yeah. That's what he said. Going to the moon is just the beginning of his vision. What he really wants to do Bezos declared, quote, is find a new home in space for our species. For near-term problems like poverty and pollution, he said, we need to find solutions close to home. But there are, there are as long-range problems as we need to work on those too, he said. They take a long time to solve you can't wait until the long-range problems are urgent to work on them. In particular, Bezos worries the technolo technological progress depends on an ever-growing supply of energy. Within a couple of centuries, he said, we'll have outstripped any reasonable resources of energy on Earth. Come on. And his plan, by a certain time, is to have millions of people, amen, on Earth. Uh, on the moon or, or on Mars. That's the tower of Babel. 
This what he do know though. He don't even realize it. But the day of the Lord will come. Well, as a thief in the night. Uh -huh. In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. Uh -huh. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Watch. Wow. And the earth also. And the works that are therein shall be burned up. He's right. One of these days the earth is going to catch fire. He ain't by himself though. He ain't by himself. I mean, no Elon Musk. Yes. He's the. I think he's the richest. This guys, Musk has has long said that humans need to establish a permanent and self-sustaining presence on Mars to ensure the countenance of consciousness as we know it, just in case planet Earth is left uninhabitable by something like a nuclear war or an asteroid strike. Please hear me today. <laughs> Amen. You ain't building no tower on Mars. The way to go is through the ark, not Mars. Yes. Yes. I had Amen. Instead of doing what God said, they did the opposite. Noah built an ark as a response to God due to the judgment that was quickly approaching and had saved his family. Nimrod built a tower out of mere survival, an outright act of rebellion towards God, and God withstood him. Amen. Willful, outright rebellion produces what? Confusion. Because the people had their hearts set on going in a direction opposite of God. The scripture said there is nothing that will restrain them. They have made up their mind to disobey God. And guess what God did? He resisted these folks. Amen. God resists the proud. God actively works against the prideful, doesn't he? Mm. Yes, sir. James 4 and 6 says, but he give grace, he give more grace. Amen. Wherefore, he said, God resisted the proud, but give it great grace unto the humble. Is this all right this morning? Yeah. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Peter came along and said, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another. Amen. And be clothed with humility, for God resisted the proud and given grace. Amen. That, that one to another means we can't treat each other just like we want to. We got to have enough respect for one another to make sure that we're pleasing God and how we treat one another. Amen. Amen. God give grace to the humble. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Amen. How many of you ever, amen, uh, I want to kind of, well, the Greek word for resist is anti-tasso. It means to stand. To range oneself against, i.e. oppose. Amen. Anybody in the house have had opposition? Amen. You know what it feels like, then, don't you? Amen. Do everything, amen, that you could. Uh, people did everything they could to block your forward progress. Anybody had some kind of opposition like that? Where it seemed like, you, it didn't seem like it, you knew it. The boss had it out for you. He knew that. Peers jealous of you and breaking you down became a priority. Yes, yes, amen. Amen. How many of you in that moment of time thought about uh, the fivefold ministry? <laughs> All right now. <laughs> Anybody? Throat ministry? Amen. Yeah, I ain't gonna Come on, somebody be real here today. <laughs> amen. Yes, yes. Amen. Who here? That you tried when you were younger to do some things and your mama or daddy resisted you. Yes. Yes. Amen. 
They set themselves against you. Amen. Because, uh, of course, a parent, they know. They want to try to what? Preserve you. Right. Amen. Right? Amen. How many of you know or, or have ever been uh, in opposition by the devil or his in imps? You know what that feels like? Maybe get one, two, I got one, two, three. You know what that feels like? That's tough, isn't it? Yes, sir. But you can pray, right? Amen. You can stay faithful to God, right? Amen. And God can help you. Amen. Amen. But what happens when God resists you? Mm. Yeah. Remember the Ghostbusters. Who you gonna call? Come on, who are you going to call when God resists you? Man, pride, oh my, pride doesn't just hurt you, it affects those around you. Amen. And so what we have to do is we got to fight against this, this thing called pride. Amen. We got to fight against this because it can keep us at odds with people that love us. Amen. Man of God gets up and preaches a message that he know came straight from heaven and he stepped all on our toes. Amen. And 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 pride said, Who he think he is? Yeah. Come on. Come on. And all of a sudden, amen. We we our hands go down, we don't clap no more. We come to church and we look like a blowfish. <laughs> Now we're mad, now we're mad, and now you, you came to hear nothing else. And the preacher's now preaching stuff to try to help you, amen, to, to take the air out of you because the pride actually puffs you up. And the preacher's tried, trying to do his best now to take the air out of us, but we can't hear it because all we're listening to is the, the offense that came because we didn't want to change our sin. Thank God for the man of God. That, that, that faithfully continues, continually try to help us to humble ourselves. I don't want to humble yourself. I want to humble myself. Amen. Amen. I, I, I know somebody today that, that won't even talk to their parents because they're full of pride. Too arrogant to admit they're wrong. Pride would not bring you to a place to receive sound doctrine, nor good godly wisdom. Pride causes you to lift yourself. Amen. Listen to Obadiah. Obadiah 1. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that said in his heart, who going to bring me down? I'm so high. How am going to bring me down? Listen to the Lord. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, mm. saith the Lord. Mm. Pride is simply this, doing my thing instead of God's. Amen. Yes, sir. The best thing to do is to resist Everything and anything that God resists. Right. Right? Don't ever think yourself more highly than you ought to be. Praise God. Amen. Here's another one. Esteem others better than yourself. Yeah. Now, I ain't no better than nobody in this house here today. Amen. Right. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. God responds to sincere worship. Yeah. And I am wrapping it up. Sincere worship is birth in humility. Amen. Real uh, uh, worship is essentially the overflow of the heart. The humble heart is full of grace, gratitude, and wisdom. And true worship is born out of humility. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Real worship. Amen. I will worship only the one true God. Amen. Real worship has very little to do with a hand raised, with a song sung, mm -hmm. with the key on the keyboard. Yeah. 
but a heart that doesn't mind following the leading of the Lord in a culture that is completely opposite of God. Living holy both in spirit and dress is, in fact, worship. Yes. Unto the Lord. Amen. Men lifting up holy hands without wrath or doubting is worshiping the one true God. And as men, our holy hands being raised come from keeping ourselves pure from the filth of our culture. Come on now. Paul did this, and I'm quitting. Paul likened our attitude to the women's apparel or their dress. That's what he did. Their modesty of dress. Paul likened the man's attitude to the modesty of women's dress. Amen. Men, your modest attitude mirrors the women's modest dress. Does it take a man away how men are to dress? But it put, put a big check on a judgmental attitude. Amen. Amen. The bottom line is we must choose to live our lives in worship to the one true God. Amen. 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 Old Testament. Old Testament worship always had sacrifice involved. Amen. And although we might appear to be strange in a society that is secretly watching and trying to create something similar to the church, because the truth is, through the power of the Holy Ghost, the church has been ahead of its time. The old timers saw our day. They did have it right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Paul said it, and preachers preached it, bishops preached it, amen, and we got to preach it. Right? Amen. That's right. Amen. So, I don't know. I hope I made sense. And uh, whatever. I scrambled. Our pastor's going to help us. Amen. Would you lift your hands? Would you thank the Lord? One of the things in Pentecost that we have a lot is people have certain talent mm -hmm. while we sing. And they're not really humble themselves. No. Amen. Right. The anointing will come at people who sing and humble themselves. Mm -hmm. Amen. The anointing will do what? Break the yoke. Yes. When we come to God, we must humble ourselves and not be arrogant because he knows where we are. He knows our faults. Amen. Amen. So when you approach God, if you really want to be lifted up in your spirit, humble yourself. One of the things, the most important things, people don't realize Repentance is a gift from God. Yeah. yeah that's true. And when you actually repent, yes. a time of refreshing comes over your soul. Yes, amen. Because yes. in the process of repentance, you humble yourself. Right. Mm. Amen. Yes, amen. This is a problem. Within the 
he went and became so arrogant about being holy and standing. Right. Hello? You got to have it right on the inside and not Yes, sir. And that will not come unless you humble yourself in the sight of God. Because God wants sincere worship. And sincere worship comes from the inside and out. Praise God. When we come, even the pain your ties and your arms. You need to give it in a humble way. Amen. Amen. Hello? Amen. Amen. It's, it, it's, people don't realize that the aspect of worship is not limited, amen, to one service. The aspect of worship, amen, should be 24 service. Yeah. You go to work. You doing your work unto yeah. unto, the Lord. unto the Lord. That's worship. Oh. Hmm? Praise yeah. God. Worship is so important. You give. That's worship. Amen. One of the things I saw years ago when I was in Africa, and uh, in the West Africa, they're very poor, but. I noticed something that uh, we're losing at Pentecost. The people came and they humbled themselves before God. And when it came time for giving an offering to the Lord, they humbled themselves an hour and a half. Marching, marching down, giving a few pennies to God. When they hit the offering plate, it was time. All you souls keep. Because God loves you. A cheerful giver. Yeah. Praise God. And, that, and that's what they were doing. They were humbling themselves. They meant to God. And they gave it. Praise God. Also seen the muscle burn down. down the town, the people lost everything they had. And uh, uh, the missionary told me, he said, you need to go to the refugees camp and preach. And I said to myself, what am I going to do and go to a refugees camp with all these people? And they have lost everything. What? Can I do to help? Well, guess what? I just had to humble myself in the sight of God. And God gave me a word, word, and I went to a uh, refugee's camp. And the, Lord, the word the Lord gave me said, don't tell me I'm poor. Amen. That was the thought. Amen. Because we are rich in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. But the way God operates, amen, he wants us to actually humble ourselves. And if we want a word from the Lord, you got to humble yourself. Amen. Praise God. Man has a tendency, amen, to want to control everything. Well, yes, yes, yes. But we got to let 